through enrichment and enrichment is a term that gets bounded about um, but to really go into what it is and how many different forms it comes in um, Megan will explain for you. <laughs> Hi everyone, so when it comes to enrichment, we see toys marketed all the time based on canine enrichment, dog enrichment, but actually going back to the meaning of the term, it was originally with zoo animals, captive zoo animals, um, kept in artificial, unnatural environments, and biologists were looking at ways they can adapt their environment for biological well-being, okay, to improve the biological functioning of these animals. Whilst we hate to think of our dogs as captives, they live lives very much on our terms. We make the majority of their decisions, we manipulate and control their environments. Looking at how we can make modifications to their life, okay, what we can add, what we can change, we can improve their contentment, their well-being, and also fulfil all those internal, genetically coded for urges for them to do dog behaviours. So when it comes to canine enrichment, there are many, many different forms and toys, but it's looking at the purpose, okay? Our dogs have luxurious lives, we buy beautiful things for them, but actually looking at the purpose of them, why we're spending our money. The most common form of enrichment relates to feeding behaviours, okay? The feeding behaviours are coded for in every single dog. Dogs are programmed to eat, but more than that, they're programmed to be able to catch, kill, hunt, track all of those behaviors that quite often are in different breeds so for example lots of our skinny pointy dogs okay lots of them have a really strong desire to chase um to pounce um more so than potentially things like golden retrievers or spaniels that are bred to you know carry or retrieve so when it comes to the feeding toys and enrichment, for example, Kongs or the stuffable snakes, things like that. What we're really doing is we're capitalizing on the natural behaviors for a dog to consume food. The, by engaging in these behaviors, your dog is being rewarded. In its very brain, his brain is lighting up, okay, full of rewarding chemicals such as dopamine, and it brings a dog contentment and positive mood state just by engaging in the act. They did a, they did a, a, a test, a bit of research with puppies. Okay, they had two litters of puppies and they s scattered food out for the puppies. And they also gave them feedables, um, food that would dispense um, treats, that, tre yeah, toys that would dispense treats. The puppies disregarded all of the kibble that was spread out over the floor and instinctively went to the element that provided challenge. They all chose the foodable, feedables. It's not necessarily to do with the food itself. It's engaging in the behavior that enables you to acquire the food. Um, so with what we're going to explain today, we're gonna to be going through a couple of our key, most favorite enrichment toys. Um, now we just need to really understand that we're doing it because on a biological level, these dogs already have these instincts. These dogs already have the desire to engage in these behaviors. And actually, chemically speaking, in terms of their well-being, it's proven to have positive effect on their well-being. So, yes, and another really key ingredient to what we believe at Hounded is that dogs are individuals and yes you might get 10 whippets lined up and they all look fairly similar they have similar traits their personalities can be really varied so when choosing a toy and making a decision about what to buy your dog really take into consideration their personality so look at the five senses what senses do they use the most what do they follow um, textures what sort of textures are they drawn to and when they play and interact with each other or you what do they use do they use their paws do they use their nose um, and all of these elements can really be puzzled together to find a really great toy for them so one example is my dog doris um, who is a rescue dog um, she's quite an underconfident dog she can be seen as quite anxious in certain situations um, but in terms of personality she's quite cat-like she pounces she'll um look for something to move to chase um, and more importantly she is very very food motivated um, using her nose to try and seek out her next bit of food so for her the type of enrichment that i would go to is anything food related so stuffable toys um, and and other games that she will get a really nice foodie reward at the end so the first 
game that I'm going to show you is the Licky Mats. Um, now, Licky Mats are a really great entry level product um, because now not all dogs may have that real play instinct. Now, for Doris specifically, um, she it doesn't come natural to her. It doesn't mean that she can't play and that she won't play with time, but she might not necessarily have the confidence to play initially. So a licky mat where you can just spread um, food onto it, pâtés or you know cream cheese, etc., um, is a really easy, accessible object for her to approach for one, and also to be rewarded. Now, licking in itself is really self-soothing. So when a dog licks, naturally they will lick um, and it will be rewarding in the sense that the brain actually releases feel-good chemicals to their body. So naturally and biologically, they feel really good. They feel really happy when they lick. Um, but not only that, once they actually do the licking motion with a mat, um, they are feeding, they are, they are receiving a great food reward at the same time. So it's doubly rewarding for them. And it just makes it a really great um, feel-good toy for them that really dogs of all abilities can use. Now, when it comes to enrichment, lots of people go out and buy toys and bring them home and present them to their dogs really excited, like, yes, you're going to love this. <laughs> Not all dogs do. Because there is a real fine line, and this is something that we stress to clients all the time, that there is a fine line between challenge and actually frustration. So we always want to present a toy to a dog that they're going to achieve, whether to you it might actually just be a cup with a couple of pieces of kibble in that they have to put their nose into to receive the kibble. That might not seem like a challenge to you at all. But to some dogs, especially a dog like Doris, that is actually quite a challenge. And the reward of going out and seeking that food for her is really great and yet again will release them really positive endorphins telling her that that was a really great activity so presenting it the second time she'll automatically presume that that's the feeling she's going to get when she does that behavior and feel rewarded so then you can up the challenge maybe in the second or the third time the more you repeat the more they'll presume that's what's going to happen and the more confident they'll feel so like i say with doris who may be slightly underconfident and not instinctively playful you can really nurture that slight play instinct and really encourage it through easy obtainable challenges so starting off with the licky mat you may initially put a really soft spread like a you know spreadable cheese and then when she's sussed that and she's really pleased and confident with it move on to a harder pate and then maybe freeze it now another type of toy that's really great because it does come in different challenges which means you can adjust it to fit your dog's abilities is the canine connectables and you've probably seen these because they've been a real buzz about them at the moment um they are great they are just like traditional jigsaws that you can slot together and you can hide whether it's pieces of kibble within them or stuff them with liquid treats so yet again you're playing around with different textures um textures to dogs they use their mouths they're like babies they use their mouths for everything they explore the world through their nose and their mouth so by giving them liquid treats and as well as like a harder kibble um that just automatically gives them even more enjoyment so with these, um, as I say, they come in three different varieties um, and you can slot them together. The less they have to click them apart, the easier it generally is. Um, and as I say, always give them an opportunity to um, achieve it um, before you go on and make it harder. So really take it really slowly. You can never go too easy with enrichment. Um, the last thing you want to do is encourage uh, frustration because that will give them a real negative association with the game and dogs really need the opportunities to play. Every day we always say timetabling, different activities for them, spread their day, plan their day so that they're given as many opportunities to be as dog as they can. Um, so that's the Canine Connectables um, and then Megan's going to talk about different plays. We've still got one um, bit more of enrichment to go. Um, as we've established, enrichment isn't a luxury. It's not a luxury toy. It's not a superficial game. We're actually looking at biologically necessary activities for a dog to fulfill the behaviours that it, it's born with. Um, coded, it, like I said, in its very genetics, in its very inner dogness, is a desire to engage in these behaviours. Okay, Denying a dog these behaviours 
um, you are comp potentially compromising their welfare. Okay, you quite often linked to a lack of environmental enrichment. You're looking at an increase in unwanted behaviours, nuisance barking, chew it, uh, destructive chewing, um, and quite often things like repetitive behaviours such as tail, tail chasing um, and light dancing. So, um, we... Bearing in mind, we've established that it's not going to be another toy to add to their toy chest. Okay, we're looking at things that are n n n essential for their well-being. Oh, well, I haven't got one with me, but I'm sure we've all seen slow feeders. Slow feeders are even now available in the supermarket. You either get maize style ones or one with ridges. And it's in the name, really. The, design, the aim of the game is to slow down dogs that bolt their food or potentially eat, are eating too quickly. But before we look at that, we actually want to understand maybe why we want to slow down the dog's eating. Dogs live for their food, okay? Morning, morning breakfast, evening dinner time, okay? We don't want the dog's enjoyment to be limited to potentially five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, okay? We want to extend that and make use of them engaging in these feeding behaviours, the foraging, the chewing, the licking, okay? All of those are really rewarding behaviours for dogs. Now, there is a movement called Ditch the Bowl. It's not as stark as you think, Ditching the Bowl is I don't want everyone to see like, everyone putting their dog bowls away. Okay, that's not the aim of the game. The idea is to feed our dogs creatively. Okay, their environment needs to be interesting and stimulating. Okay, we don't want to leave our dogs hungry and frustrated. So, of course, maintain a portion of their food in their bowls. But then actually look at how else we can actually give them their food. Can we potentially use a dig out of our recycling bin, a cereal packet and put in a couple of handfuls of kibble, fold the box back up again and put that on the floor. The level of challenge, the dog will instinctively know there's food inside that and then that behaviour of either using their paw or their mouth to break inside the box and get the kibble out. They think they're Houdin geniuses, absolute geniuses. They think they hunted and found the kibble themselves in that box discarded on the floor, okay? So with Ditch the Bowl, we, it's, the possibilities are limitless. We can look at hashtag ditch the bowl for lots of ideas, but simple in this nice weather, I can't think of anything better than taking a couple of handfuls of kibble, sprinkling it on the lawn, and letting them spend 10, 15 minutes of an evening rootling around, snuffling, okay, and finding bits of kibble. There is nothing more relaxing, soothing, and rewarding for a dog um, than that kind of scatter feeding. Other forms of ditch the bowl, look at feeding, um, delivering food to your dogs in the enrichment toys we've spoken about, but also just, just looking outside of the bowl, okay? We've got some book recommendations if anyone's interested in exploring this further, but equally the internet is a minefield. But as Holly said earlier, we do not want, we do not want any dogs being frustrated. Um, we do not want any, how awful would it be if we suddenly squished our most amazing food into a really, really difficult rubber toy uh, placed it in front of us and you just think, human, why are you doing this to me? Why, why, how am I supposed to get the delicious food out? Okay, so we just want to make sure that a dog, the level of challenge okay is equivalent to the reward okay what they're getting from it is worth the effort they're investing the final thing we're going to be speaking about today slightly different to looking at food enrichment and things like that we're going to be looking at play dogs are unique in that dogs will engage in social play with humans in addition to social play with other dogs and to object play dogs will engage with us um, it's fascinating because they're one of the, few, I think, one of the only uh, mammals that will do this, and it's a product of a selection. As we've grown up and lived alongside dogs for, you know, gener generations, hundreds and hundreds of years, um, we've selectively chosen dogs that will engage with us and will play with us. So we have now lived life with these great companions that seek out our company, seek out our attention. So it's been proven in studies with dogs um, that it's beneficial for both sides. We get oxytocin and they get oxytocin. We're both being rewarded. We both have our brains lighting up with feel-good chemicals when we're playing with each other, okay? Um, and additionally, it's been proven that Dogs sampled after a period of play with a human have lower levels of cortisol, okay? Their stress levels are reduced. 
play is also unique in that it's an, it's an actual definable indicator of positive emotional state. These dogs are happy. No sad dog plays. No stressed dog plays. Okay? Happy dogs play. So there's nothing more rewarding for us as their, as their owners and their guardians is knowing that, you know what, my dog's really happy. It's playing with me. So, when it comes to play, we've got a, we're going to demo one toy today. This is a chaser tug, okay? We capitalise on play with dogs because, again, it links to natural behaviours. Dogs have hardwired in them a sequence of motor patterns, a sequence of behaviours, okay, that are adapted to, for them to catch prey, okay? There, there are huge, different dogs have different patterns um, that they'll exhibit but generally speaking all dogs have the ability to that stalking behavior that pouncing behavior the chasing the grab bite and then quite often the shake that is accompanied with it and we've all I'm sure had exploded cuddly toys that dissecting okay where they're pulling out all the innards of the cuddly toy <laughs> With this chaser tug, we are giving them the opportunity to d engage in all of those behaviours, all of those behaviours that are coming naturally to them. It's an outlet for dogs that potentially run off for the thrill of the chase, for dogs that are exploding all the kids' toys in the, in the living room. Okay, we've got an outlet for that. So engaging in these, this play, we are using this toy and it, again, capitalises on those instincts. I would suggest that when we start off with we need to make this super valuable this is going to be a toy for the kitchen cupboard it's not a toy to be left out for them to lose value it's a toy that needs to maintain high value when this toy comes out it's the highlight of your dog's day to begin with it will have no value to the dog the dog will be potentially curious but have no real enthusiasm for it so quite often with our dogs we need to excite them and give this the value quite often that involves twitching it along the floor we're really trying to capture that kind of prey like jerky motions okay and we're going to be chasing it along the floor encouraging that chase and the pounce as it as we build up and the dogs build up confidence with it we will then be looking at engaging in tug the dog biting the tug and us being able to pull it a couple of tips we should always let the dog win the tug okay because then the dog should aim for the to bring it back to us because that highlight, that the absolute apex of enjoyment should be when we're both playing it. If the dog is all of a sudden just wanting to take the tug from us and run off, we're doing it wrong, okay? Because we should be bringing the party to the tug game. Um, secondly, it's uh, really important that we keep our, our, when we're tugging it, long and low to avoid injury. Quite often, you <laughs> big generalization, you'll see um, a couple of like very well-built men, you know, probably swinging a Staffordshire Bull Terrier around, doing <laughs> figures of eights with all feet off the ground. That's likely to cause neck injuries. Um, and it's those short jerky motions that aren't beneficial to dog or human. So long um, sweeping paws. Um, and the final word is um, that when quite often if your dog is becoming over aroused and this is super super value it's very very worthwhile in get, buying two toys exactly the same you have one in each hand and then simply you can swap toys in and out um, secondly oh finally actually um, we would say that the moment your dog's it's really really tiring for a dog a game of tug is really really tiring so um, you would want to stop the moment before they get fatigued Okay, you want to close play while they're still really, really enthusiastic and having a great time because we don't want any value to be lost. Um, in summary, uh, play is great because it's a unique bond building activity. We have got a dog choosing to engage with us. We know that they're finding it reinforcing and rewarding. And equally, we have, we have the sense of enjoyment knowing that actually it's us. We're providing that. Um, and whilst other, you know, single object play for them, for them to have a toy in the house, um, has its place um, and other types of play has its place. This is one that's uniquely will privileged enough to be able to do with them.